Hi, I'm Sue Wilson and I want to welcome you to my next installment of my new video series called Crafting My Style. In today's series, we are going to be making this card here for you. It's a beautiful black and white card, very elegant, using some lovely dyes that we have today. So I'll show you just a, just a quick peek at some of the, um, the dyes in their packaging. This is the Just Right Vintage Labels 4. This dye that we'll be using is the Heartfelt Creations Blossoms Corner. It's a beautiful, intricate dye. Lovely. Really, really like this one. We've got the Spellbinders Bitty Blossoms. Beautiful set, spiral flowers and leaves. And we've also got the Heartfelt Creations Vintage Florets. Beautiful flowers. And one of my favorite items is the new A4 embossing folder that I've designed, Heart Lattice. It's by Creative Expressions. And we're also going to be using the matching stamps by Heartfelt Creations of the Vintage Florets and the Just Right uh, Stamps Enjoy the Day. This is a clear set, really, really easy to use. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I think we'll start with the background first. We've got the um, heart uh, lattice that we're going to be using. So um, it's a nice A4 size. I've got a piece of black card here and I like to tape it into place. So let me get my glasses on, get all ready. And I've got a little bit of removable tape here. Get that started. And I'm just gonna line it up so it's nice and straight. Just put a little piece on there, close the folder. And what you'll need for your sandwich on your Grand Caliber is the base plate, put your folder with your card in it, and um, I'm using the Raspberry Adapter Plate from Spellbinders. Now, the thing about these larger folders that I've noticed is that because the Grand Caliber tends to have more uh, pressure on the sides, you, you sometimes can get a little bit of a bowing. So what I've decided to do is to put a little piece of card as a shim right there in the center. And now we'll run it through. And you just have to easily roll it through your Grand Caliber. One pass through does the job. And let's see what we have here. Set this aside. Put this over here. And you can see how nice this embossed. Let me take off my tape. There we go. You can get in there and see how really pretty that detail is. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put that into the background using the blossom corner. But what I've already done is I've cut one of them already ahead of time, and I'm gonna do a second one now. So there's two in this set. I'm gonna be using the smaller one, and because it's very detailed and intricate, what you wanna do is use a little piece of wax paper with this, and definitely, definitely tape it into to place. So line it up, and I just kinda of wanna center it so there's a little bit of edge here. And give it a little tape, and let me get my base plate and my cutting plate. In fact, it's easier if we do that right on top of that cutting plate. We can actually tape it down and put a little bit of tape on this side just so it doesn't go wonky on you. You don't want that. All right, and we're going to run this through our Grand Caliber. Now, on dies like this, they're really very detailed. So what you want to do is probably run it over, clear the um, center of the machine, run it back, because it will take more than one pass through to cut. And then what I like to do is check it, I can just set it aside, turn it over, see that it's cut really well. Now that looks like it may have a little bit more it needs to be cut, but I tell you what I do, I will move to my next step and emboss it and see sometimes that is just all you need to do the job. So I'm going to trade it out, put it with the dye side up, the tan mat over the top, the pink embossing plate, and I'm going to run it through the machine again. And then we'll just run it back. I only need to catch that top corner there. Let's move this out of our way and let's see how it did. Ah, I think we've done it. This is another thing. You've got to make sure that you take all your little pieces off your tan mat because those will emboss into projects you do later in the future. Okay, so now with a little pokey tool, we're just going to poke out the pieces. 
And I tend to like to do this when it's in the die still, because if I hit some that don't want to poke out, I can run it back through then and I don't have to reseat the die. Just takes a few minutes. Yeah, let's see, we're getting most of them there. Now, this die is unique in that it doesn't actually cut all the way out of your, your card. You're gonna cut, the two sides will stay uh, completely attached and you're going to cut the bottom edge, which is kind of unique. There's fun things you can do with it because of that. So let's get these little pieces out of the way. It's kind of relaxing actually, sit and poke all the little pieces out. It's fun getting to make a big mess. There we go, push that off to the side for the moment. If you've got a little bit of adhesive, you need to have a little bit of an eraser to take that off with. So now I should be able to tuck my background piece up in like this, and then on this side, it should be able to tuck right in like that. How nice is that? So we've got a piece that's just slotted in perfectly. Okay, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a little bit of single-sided tape and I'm just gonna tape it into place. Just get it on there. Catching the edge right there on both sides. Okay, that should hold it into place. All right, now that part is done and sorted. We're gonna do a little bit of taping to get it back onto our our major background piece there, which I've already pre-done. I've pierced the edge around there to create a nice little mat for it. And then we'll start working on our focal element. That should be enough for it. Make sure your hearts are upright. I do forget that often. There we go. Okay, so that's good. Now, we're gonna start working on the center section a little bit. I've used the ovals from the Just Right Vintage Labels 4 set. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those ready, set up to cut. There again, I like to use a little bit of tape. And let's find our cutting mat. And since these are fairly simple, we can do them all at once. And I think also our leaves that we're going to be using. Now these are from your Bitty Blossom set. So you wanna turn them so that the cutting ridge is down. And we're gonna just tape them into place. I'm a real big believer in taping the dies because it, it, I don't like to have them move around when I'm cutting. And then you find you have to cut things again. So pop that on, run that through our machine. And sometimes you hear that cracking, don't panic. That's perfectly normal. It's just the die going into the cutting plate. It tends to happen more with the, um, the simpler dies too, I've noticed. So I'm gonna leave that, take these off, set that aside. And I'll tell you what, we're not even going to emboss them because they're just gonna be little edges we'll use. We're going to do a little bit of inking on this one. So let's take them out separate and just give them a little bit of a highlight. And we are going to be using black soot. Now this is a Distress Ink by Tim Holtz. It does, it's a very, obviously it's a very black color. So I'm gonna do a really light inking. I just, just basically wanna show those veins up a tiny bit. So it doesn't take too much. And sometimes you don't even think that um, you have any on there. When you take it out of the dye, you can see that it's really nicely inked but I don't want it to be too dark, so I'm keeping it really, really light here. That should be enough, let's see. Okay, set that to the side, and use a little pokey tool, we can pop these right out. There's one for you. See, you can see those veins showing up on those leaves really, really nicely now. Okay, we're gonna set that aside, put those back onto our magnetic plate, our sheets. Okay, set those to the side. And I've got these that I'm going to be using as a mat. Put that back into place. Now, one of the other things that I've done on this card is I've created what I call a faux nesty. And a faux nesty is basically, um, you, take the, you take the die and you put it onto whatever card you want and you draw around it with a pencil like I've done here, okay? giving you the shape. And what it does is it allows you a slightly larger mat 
to use because this is your cutting ridge in the center of your die here. And if you use the outside, you've got about an eighth of an inch of a mat that you can use. So you can cut that out with your scissors, which I've already done, and just take a little piece of sandpaper and go around it and just kind of fine tune the edges a little bit. That's all it takes because we're, our cutting isn't quite as precision as the dies uh, would be. So really, really simple like that, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack these up. So I've got my larger one here. I've got my faux nesty in the middle, okay? And I'm gonna use a little bit of mounting foam and cut a piece for this one. Oops. And put it on the back of this. So I'm layering up the focal element that I'm going to be using. That looks pretty good. We're, in fact, we'll go ahead and seat this in the middle of our card. Right there. Okay. Now, um, I've got some vintage florets. I've already cut them ahead of time, but I'm going to show you what I think is a really easy way to stamp these. So I've got um, a black archival ink pad. This is the one I recommend for a really nice dark black inking, um, and I've got my little florette stamps. So rather than putting these actually on a block, what I do is I just ink them like this, okay? Get them real good and inked, and then I set them down and find the matching florette. And if you notice, they're not quite the same shape all the way around, so you can kind of figure out which one goes to which petal here and get it all lined up. Let's see, that one looks like it's that one. And then we're just going to set it down and push on it. And you just get a really nice inking that way. Okay, let's do the other one. Oops. There we go. Now make sure I get that really good there. And put this one on there. And there's a little flat spot on this one I kind of like to try and line up. Push that down. There we go. A little bit of ink on the fingers, but that's part of the fun of crafting, isn't it? So now we can just take and form our, our flowers. I use, you can use your uh, fingernail and just kind of give them a little bit of form. And then we're gonna take some Cosmic Shimmer glue, get a little bit of glue dot in there, let it set for a second while I form this one up. Just give it a little bit of shape. You can put it onto your foam mat and use a um, flower shaping tool if you like. Well, you know, whatever you do, however you make your flowers, it works. And then we're going to layer this one up and just offset it a bit. And just give it a second to hold. In fact, what we can do is put it onto our foam mat and just put a pin through it to hold it into place till it's nice and set up, okay? And in the meantime, we're going to stamp our sentiment. Now, the sentiment comes from the Just Right Stamps uh, Enjoy the Day set. Um, one of the things I've noticed when I've been working with clear stamps is that they tend to be a little bit floppier than regular uh, rubber stamps. So I think what works really well for me is if you lay it upside down so it, it keeps its nice shape and then you just attach it like this with your block and then you tend to get a really nice shape that way. You don't um, pull it out of, pull it out of, um, the actual shape it's supposed to be and give it a you know a little wiggle in the line that kind of thing so we're going to go ahead and stamp this i'm just going to ink it up with my black archival and i've got a little piece of card here so i'm going to stamp it right in the middle give it a good push there we go now i'm going to stamp my sentiment and same thing i'm just going to put it like that pick it up make sure it's nice and straight Give it a little stamp, pick up my ink, and then I'm going to stamp it right in the center. And because it's clear, you can see where you're stamping. There we go. So I've got that. And I'm going to use a piece of the uh, self-adhesive sticky sheets. Now these come in a set. Um, there's five in the set, like this. But we're just going to use a little tiny piece here. I'm going to cut it and just have it big enough to go over my label shape there. No need to waste it. Set that to the side and peel it off. Now there's a kind of a gloss side on these and there's a matte side. I personally think the matte side is easier to cut through. So if you hold that matte side towards you and just get the edge going, 
easier said than done some days. There we go. The sticky sheet stays on that matte side. So we're gonna pop that on top of that, okay? And as you see, you can actually just barely see through it there. And if you hold it to the light, it's really easy to line up, little trick. So what I'm gonna do is put this down and I'm gonna take a little bit of tape and I'm going to hold it up to the light and get it lined up there, tape it into place. And the other thing I always do when I'm doing this is I check it from the back and that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. So I've got my base plate and my cutting plate. So I'm gonna have cutting ridge down, put my base plate on top of that and roll that through. Now you never want to emboss when you're using the sticky sheets because the um, tan mat will make the uh, backing paper kind of crack on it. There we go. In fact, I've got one I've already done, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel the backing off on this one and use the microbeads. Now these are my microbeads, and I'll show you what they look like when you get them in the container. Here they are. And I've decanted them into just a plastic container here like that. This is the way I leave them on my desk like this. So put them in there. And it gives a really lovely textural look. But you can still read the sentiment through it. Isn't that lovely? Okay, set those to the side. I'm going to add a bit of mounting foam to the back of this. Because I like to raise things on my cards for dimension. I think it gives it a much prettier look. And then we're going to sit center this right in the, uh, the middle of our ovals, like that, okay? And let's start assembling. We've got our flowers here, and I've made a few ahead of time. And let's get this little guy here. He should be good and dry, and we're gonna put a little um, half um, uh, flat back pearl in the center of it. So put a little bit of um, glue there, the Cosmic Shimmer glue, and let me get a hold of a pearl there. Put that right in the center. And I think I'll use some glue dots for this. And we'll just pop them on the back of each of the flowers. So I've got a couple here. We'll just put one here. And this one's a tiny bit bigger. And we'll put one of the little guys down here. Just kind of offset it a little bit. And we want a little bit of balance. So let's put another one on the top. In fact, let's just go with one of these little tiny guys. Just set them one up there and put our leaves in. Now these two come as a set together and I like to kind of give them a little bit of forming. Just bend them a little bit. Just makes them look a little more realistic. And I think I'll just go ahead and put these in and kind of stick them underneath a little bit for your flowers and give them some nice accents. And how about like about like that. I have a couple more it's up to you. It's a personal preference how you want to set your flowers, your leaves up, what appeals to you. Uh, you know, card making is a very personal thing. So you have to decide, is that too much? Is it not enough? Do you want more flowers, less flowers? You know, but you kind of get the idea and you can see what you can do with them. Okay, now it just needs a little bit more something to me. So I've brought along some of our pearl swirls. Now I've cut this one up a little bit, um, but I'm gonna just go ahead and I think I can even trim this down a little bit more and we can use it for something else. We'll just use a little bit top and bottom here. And we're just going to peel them off. And the way I do this, I mean, they are fiddly. There's a little bit of a learning curve to these. Just be patient as I try to get them in one piece. Try not to overlap them and then get the end where I want it, and then kind of just let them fall where they want. There we go. Move that one around a tiny bit. That's not too bad. And in fact, what I think I might even do is just take a little bit of this one and add it into the bottom here. What's nice about these pearls is you can really cut them up and use them however you want to. So you're not um, stuck with any particular design necessarily. Oh, that's a little too long. Let's shorten that one. See, we're crafting as we go here, changing things to suit. So there's that side, and I've got another one here. And let's do the same thing with that one. We'll just trim it down a little bit and have it going opposite. 
they're nice little additions when your card just needs something and you're not quite sure what it is. Um, a little pearl swirl is usually the number. It's, it usually just fills the bill. I love these, I use them a lot. So let's just lay that down carefully. And, and I have to say, until you really push on them, you can pick them up and kind of play with them. They're, they're very useful in that. And I'm gonna tuck that under there. And I'll tell you what it really needs. One more thing. We are going to add some just slightly larger pearls to the center of those blossom corners because sometimes just the final little accents, it's all that a card needs. So we'll just pop that on there. Put this one on here. Oops, slippery little guys. And let's see if I can get that one on. There we go. Straighten that up. Voila, I think we are done. And you have it. Here's today's card for you. I do hope you've enjoyed this installment of the video series and I'm looking forward to bringing you another one.